What's going on? Welcome to my channel, everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about an auto vlogger that I made for the live training. But before we get into that, I'm just going to do a quick plug for the live training. Now, a lot of people, a lot of gurus, a lot of people on YouTube, they have live trainings and they cost a hell of a lot of money. Our live training is seven euros for a session or 28 euros for the month. Now, we think that's pretty reasonable. You can see here, someone said a in the group, why is this coaching so affordable? Just seven bucks a week or seven dollars a week, uh, seven euros a week. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about this. We decided to do this training um, as a way for people to ask direct questions to me and for us to interact with people. And also just for those who want a little bit more information than what is on the channel. However, this is not paywalling content. There is nothing on the training that you can't find on my channel. It's just the training is an hour lesson whereas a YouTube video is a 10, 15 minute YouTube video. So if you want to join, just go to incomestreamsurfers.com slash live training. You'll see a link in the description. And as soon as you sign up, you get access to the 10 classes or 11 classes that we've already done. We've had one class about link building from Dagan, who's a link building expert. I've done about eight of the classes. Um, I've done a custom GPT masterclass. I've taught about Python, how to automate things. Rowan talks a lot about homepage designs that actually convert and other really, really interesting conversion rate things. Now, a lot of people think conversion rate is only relevant to e-com, but it's also relevant for basically any business. And then we also had Michael on who talked about some analytics and how to set up analytics in depth on your website. Now, yes, I will say that this is a little bit salesy, this page, but these are real comments from real people who have really started to grow their businesses. Everybody that is in the training has talked about how good and how affordable the training is. That's enough pitching, guys. I really, really hope that some people join, though, because we've got about 100 people in there right now, and people are loving it. So anyway, a lot of people in the training, they were asking me if I could make another autoblogger. And, you know, having personal access to me is not a bad thing. They asked me to make an autoblogger and I did exactly that. So let's talk a little bit how to use this autoblogger. So if you don't want to use git clone, you can actually just press code here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You can just press code here and then download a zip. Now I'm going to do that for this video, but I would recommend learning about um, git clone and things like that. But I'm just going to, because it's quite a small file. Let's just use this method just because I think it's easier for people to understand. Now we're going to be using something called Visual Studio Code and you will also need Python. You'll also need a few other dependencies and things. I'm not going to go too in detail on how to get the autoblogger to run, but you do need Visual Studio Code and you do need Python. They are the base things that you need for the autoblogger. You also need a Claude API key. I know that Claude is not available in every country. I'm sorry for that. You can use a VPN to get around that. If you have someone, if you have a friend who's on Claude, you can also ask them to invite you to Claude and that should get you onto it. So now that we have this folder here, I'm going to right click and press open with code. This is then going to open the auto blogger inside Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to click up here, terminal, new terminal. And then we're already inside the correct folder. So. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the .m file, which you can find inside the um, the main folder, basically. And then I can actually see that we're not inside the right folder, so I do cd Claude here. And now we're in the right folder. Now, this is why you should use git clone, because this is just ridiculously complicated, but that's okay. Now, I've already put the details in here, but I'm going to explain how you can get all of these details one by one. So the first thing you need is a sitemap. So I'm just going to scroll. I'm going to use um, Google Search Console for this just because I suits sitemaps. They're a mess. Um, so we'll just grab, I guess, this. Well, we'll grab the blog sitemap first. And we're going to be using a Chrome extension called Sitemap to Clipboard. Um, this works with most types of sitemaps. If it doesn't work with your type of sitemap, you can actually copy the entire sitemap into a Google Sheet and then just copy the relevant um, the relevant uh, column. So what we'll do is we'll go to isuit.it and then slash sitemaps slash blog slash blog sitemap.xml and then we're going to click sitemap to clipboard, click HTTPS and then just hit start. That should have copied. Yeah, it says URLs copied to clipboard. 
So then we'll click inside blogs.txt, control A, control V, and now we have a list of all of our blogs. The reason that we've done this is so that we have something to internally link to. The second thing we need to do is guidelines. Now I've already got a set of guidelines here. You can think of this as your branding guidelines. If there are certain words you don't want to use, or if there are certain words you want to use, if there's certain things you, you know, you, if, if you don't, a lot of people, for example, they have a specific brand. This is actually not true. This is not how iSuit is written. iSuit is actually written like this. But I'm testing things and making sure they work. So we'll check in the final content if iSuit is written properly like this. You must use the word cheap in headings. That is a word that you can never use for iSuit. We can never use the word cheap. However, again, I'm just testing to see if the guidelines are being followed. And then you must use the word made. You must not use the word made in Italy, which again is completely false, but that's fine. I'm just testing. The next thing we need to fill in is the keywords.txt. Now, all you need to do is for a new article, you just need a new keyword. So the best Italian coat brands of 2024. And then we'll do the best Italian shirt brands of 2024, comma, and then another keyword, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if you want to write 50 articles, you need 50 lines in your um, keywords.txt, okay, with each one separated by a comma, like that. Okay, pages.txt should not be here, so we will just delete pages.txt. That, sh that shouldn't be there. I'll explain why in a minute. And then sample.txt, all you need to do is find one of your best performing articles. So we're just going ice suit, uh, we're going ice suit black tie attire. This is one of our best performing articles overall. It's just, it's got like probably 20,000 to 30,000 clicks now, which is pretty crazy. And then I'm going to drag this down like this, just drag my mouse down and then hit copy and then go to paste to mark down on Google. Click this one here, Git, GitHub pages, ewangoddard.github.io. And then just control V to paste. And you can see now we actually have um, a fully formatted uh, article, basically, which you can then use for style or for formatting or whatever it might be. Okay, so that's all of the kind of info that we need to fill in. But you're probably saying to yourselves, where are the photos going to come from? Now, I've actually included something called image scraper.py. If you scroll down to the bottom here and put your sitemap here, then it will actually just use your sitemap as a way to find all of the images. So for example, now we have this sitemap right here. If I do Python image scraper.py and then let it run, you'll see that it creates a file called image urls.csv. I'm gonna let this run for about 15 seconds. So I'll actually just keep talking while that's happening so that we can just see how quick this actually is. What it's doing right now is it's literally going on the sitemap URL, finding um, a web page, and then scraping three images from that web page. So if I do control C here to cancel the run, you'll see this is now populated with 32 lines of um, links and also images. I'm actually gonna let it run for a little bit longer. Okay, while that's running, let's talk about the .env files. So we have brand name, iSuit. I'm gonna change this to match the, the guidelines.txt. You don't actually have to change any of these because as long as you don't change the name of any of these files, you don't have to change any of these. Now, originally there was also um, pages.txt, but I've replaced pages.txt with this image URLs system, so just don't worry about that. And then perplexity doesn't work at the moment. So please just leave this as false. I haven't had time to fix this. Now, the really cool thing about this particular auto blogger or content writer or whatever the hell you want to call it is you actually have full control over what type of content you're making. So for example, you could put service page if you wanted to make service pages. If you want to make location pages, you can just write location pages. These, these are open. You can write anything here, okay? So content type, let's just say blog post. And then article tone, we'll just leave it as sarcastic and famous person, Morgan Freeman. That's fine. I'd recommend experimenting with these and trying to get the best results for you personally. Now, the final thing we need for this to work is an Anthropic API key. So if you just go to console.anthropic.com slash dashboard, get API key, create new key, call it something, and then press create key. I'm going to delete this key after this video, so yeah. 
copy key, there we go. And then your API key paste like that. We're actually now set up to write content, okay? And it's only been, I know I'm going quite quickly guys, but it's only been about nine minutes and we're already set up. Now I'm gonna cancel this run just because I'm impatient and I wanna get this video out. So let's press cancel here and we'll go to image URLs. It is late guys, I've been working all day long basically. And we'll do control F and then we'll type coat. And just to see if we have enough. And then the other keyword was shirt. Uh, we do have some sweatshirts. No, let's go. No, let's just do best brands or uh, blazers. Blazer. No, we'll just do best brands because I don't have, I don't have time to let, you know, all all the pages on the website be be uh, scraped. I just I'm a little bit impatient. So let's just change the keyword here to the best Italian brands of 2024. Okay, so now we need to do Python bigboy.py and we'll let this run. Oh, yes. So this is an issue that you will run into. If it says module not found something, it means that you have to install one of these on your computer. Okay, so most likely you don't have anthrop anthropic, so you have to do pip install anthropic. Most likely you don't have signal, you have to do pip install signal. You don't have CSV, you have to do pip install CSV. And in this case, I don't have um, keyboard, so I'll do pip install keyboard and let that install. It should just pop up saying um, now being installed. Perfect. Now when I run the script, it should just work. I've changed a lot of things about the process here. But probably my favorite thing that I've changed is that you can actually now pause and ask it to start again with feedback. Now, this might not be perfect yet. I don't recommend using that too much because it's still in uh, beta, beta. I, I, I hate saying that word because I never know if people say beta or beta. But let's just see what happens here. So you can see there is the image URL. There's the page URL, which gives it an internal link and then the image URL. So this should be a coat if I'm not really bad at what I do, and it is a coat. This should also be a coat, hopefully. Yep, perfect, okay. This should also be a coat, beautiful. Uh, this should also be a coat. Okay, it's a women's coat, but that's okay. You can't really blame Claude for that. That's just bad, um, bad by me, not by Claude. That's my fault, not Claude's fault. That's another coat. Beautiful, and then this should be another coat. Beautiful. So you can see the process is really, really simple here. So now we have 10 pages to link to. So 10 clothing pages. By the way, guys, this works with non-e-commerce, okay? I, I actually used this for a client earlier who was in web development, okay? So it, it doesn't have to be e-commerce. It doesn't have to be Shopify. It doesn't have to be anything. There's no limits to this, okay? That's why I'm so happy and so proud of this particular iteration of the autoblogger. Now we can see it's now writing the content and you can see it's following the tone of voice. It's using the word cheap, just like I told it to, even though I've never used the word cheap, obviously for, for Kiton. <laughs> just for context, if people don't know, Kiton is uh, about two grand for a coat on average, so. It's definitely not cheap. We're not allowed to use the word cheap. I just used that. <laughs> God, I used, uh, I'm just using that as a test, okay? And the other thing I wanna see is, is it writing iSuit as I asked it to write iSuit? So we'll have a little look here. Let's just let this finish writing and we'll see how long the content is as well. Maybe let's just do control F uh, iSuit and see if we can find where it's written iSuit. It doesn't seem to have actually written iSuit anywhere, but that's okay as well. The cheap and chic Brunello Cuccinelli collection. I would have been fired if I'd written this article um, back when I was working for my old boss. He, If he had seen that, I would have been out of the door. Um, Brunello Cuccinelli is the opposite of cheap. Okay, so we now have a generated blog post right here, and it goes into a separate text file. Now, there are still things that I want to work on with this script. I'd like it to make a little bit longer content. But if I go down to markdown to html.com, control A, control V, you can see that the tone has been followed. There's a load of images. The content is looking pretty damn nice, if I may say so myself. And it should be about 800 words, I'm hoping. Uh, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, 783 words. So I would like to make this give slightly longer content. 
But in terms of just a quick, easy, and completely adjustable, I'm going to say auto blogger, but I'm not actually giving people a way to post automatically to their websites because I don't think that's actually a good idea. Um, it's one of the best auto bloggers I've made by far. You can easily change how the content's written and you can even play around with the two prompts. Now, just before I finish this video, let's just quickly talk about the actual prompt. So it looks like actually there might be a problem with max tokens here. Yeah, so you can change the max tokens here to make this longer and also the max tokens here, but this is actually probably the, the largest amount that you can write. If you do control F max tokens, this is a good way to find the prompts, okay? So anything above this max token, so max tokens equals 1000, this is actually the prompt right here. So if you want to change how it's selecting images or if you, yeah, if you want to change how it's selecting images, you would change the def select relevant content prompt. And if you want to change how the content's being written, you would change this prompt here underneath the, um, yeah, uh, underneath basically. So it's the, um, this one here, user prompt. So you can actually just do control F and look for user prompt, or you can just look for system prompt as well. And you can change this, okay? So if you wanted to change anything about the script, then you can actually just change the prompt. You can make it do whatever the hell you want, to be quite honest with you. This is probably the most flexible way of creating content currently available. Now let's just do the other article here. So control A, control V again. You can see none of the images are made up. It's perfect. And yeah, let's just quickly check how long this content is this time. Might be slightly longer. Looks like it's probably exactly the same length. 847 words. Not bad at all. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it, guys. I'm still going to be working on this over the next few weeks. I just wanted to get this released so people could start using it. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.